I've always wanted to be a teacher. Cliché, I know. But it was already in kindergarten with Miss Carney at Bursay School that I knew the answer to the what do you want to be when you grow up question. Maybe I knew it before that. My mom says she had to hide the scissors and glue when I was even smaller. Apparently she had to put a giant elastic around the fridge too, but that's another story. I was inspired by some of my own teachers, and two of them in particular motivated me to choose English and history as main areas. But in 1989, my grade 12 year, teaching jobs were hard to come by. Edla, you're very musical. You should major in band. It'll open a lot more opportunities for you. That piece of advice changed my focus, and after convocation, I spent six years teaching band and music. When my husband and I moved and started a family, I returned to teaching, but putting my English minor to use this time. In the ensuing years, I literally taught at every grade level, from kindergarten to grade 12, in all subject areas. The fall of 2013 was the 20th anniversary of my convocation, and it was the year I returned to university as a student. This is my journey, not made with scissors and glue this time, but with an idea and an analogy. Going back is hard. Times have changed. Things are moldy and crusty, and I'm not sure how comfortable the seat will be after standing for so long. Part of me is hesitant. I like what I do. I like to teach. I like my classroom. I've never wanted to be an administrator. I don't aspire to work for Google. But I am always trying to improve my teaching so that I can be better prepared to help my students. Maybe that's not ambitious enough, but it's what I want most. So I haul the desk out of the overgrown grass, and with a quick cleaning of the literal and figurative cobwebs, I'm ready to return. Teachers design for learning every day. You see what your students know, what they don't know, and determine a path for bridging the gap. Of course, it's more nuanced than that. Teaching is a complex process. But unlike face-to-face -face situations, designing instruction for an online setting adds another dimension. My final project for this class was an online pre-teaching module for teaching treaties in the classroom. Considering the visual design of the site was a multifaceted and involved process but one that I was very proud of when completed. By choosing a meaningful topic, it also allowed me to explore and learn more about the content as I made decisions as an instructional designer. I'll admit that I wasn't interested in grad studies for years because of two reasons. I didn't want to be a principal and I didn't want to research a thesis. So the required research classes were a challenge for me, and I worried that my worst fears about statistics and jargon would be realized. But they were far from the dry clinical lectures that I had visualized in my head. And it wasn't far into the program that I saw connections everywhere to our work. As a teacher, we collect quantitative and qualitative data all the time. It just might look like SMART goals or assessment techniques. As a final assignment in 800, a partner and I designed a research project with the title, Do They Know What We Think They Know? An Investigation into the Technology Skills of Alberta Students. It was a very valuable process, and I realized the importance of ongoing research into educational issues. The idea of ethics isn't unknown to teachers either, as our professional lives are guided by the STF Code of Ethics, as well as ethical dealings with students and parents every day. These ideals truly are at the heart of everything we do and with everyone we encounter, and I place them at the core of the desk for that reason. As distance education expands exponentially, the distance ed teacher has many challenging tasks. Learner responsibilities, demographics, course design, communication, and of course, technology. 
The main project in this course was a group collaboration. As a team, we designed the structure for an online digital photography course for adults. Using the instructional framework designed by Badrul Khan, we designed a strong course with additional support system and resources to ease learner concerns. The course was intended to use the Blackboard management system and the proposal fit a niche market as the only online photography course for adults in Saskatchewan. With so many of our students now choosing to take online courses, they are connected to other learners and the world and in subjects that are otherwise unavailable to them. Having been on the receiving end of program cuts as a student and as a teacher, the program evaluation class was an invaluable experience. Ironically, the university was undergoing their own transform us process at the time, which provided interesting conversations and in hindsight, a valuable lesson. For my final project, I chose to complete a proposal for the healthy eating initiative at our school, which was in its first year at the time. I really liked going through the program evaluation process, analyzing stakeholders, determining guiding questions and indicators, as well as learning about the many different data collection methods and their limitations. The apple is a symbol of traditional education, but in this case, it is also quite literally the focus of my program evaluation in 809. In recent years, I've incorporated technology into my classroom in many ways. Blogs, websites, video making, and more. That's what interested me in the ETAD program. So although I had some fairly solid skills to start, I learned a lot about using media effectively and using the media to design effectively. I was really proud of all my projects, but particularly my final one, which was a website for the Lucky Lake and District Museum. It included photography, video, audio, photo editing, basic animation. Interestingly, the museum is located in the community school and old classrooms are repurposed into displays. Just as this old desk, which was the inspiration for me, is being re-envisioned for today's reality. Video making has been an interest of mine for many years. And as an ELA teacher, there is great potential for students to use it as a communication medium. Because it was summer, that limited my options with students. But I recruited my nieces and nephews for a final video project on recent changes to assessment. There were challenges with weather and sound and equipment, and the realization that making a larger video is a huge undertaking. But overall, I was very pleased with the final result. On the desk, Video making is best represented by the cables, a way to connect to your content and curriculum. Sometimes it's very straightforward. Sometimes it leads you to other areas. And sometimes it's a complex mess as you make changes and troubleshoot problems. But throughout it all, it's a valuable learning process. Although 802 is generally one of the first classes to take in the ETAB program, I ended up taking it last, and I think it was more meaningful for me that way. Like all the advice people can give you about raising teenagers or life in general, until you get to experience it, you don't fully understand. You can't. And so although my ETAB journey is almost over, in many ways it feels like it has just begun. I chose a desk to anchor my analogy. Since desks are still found in almost every classroom in every school throughout the world, it's a recognizable piece of learning and education. But the world is also changing at an unimaginable rate, and our students will be entering one where we can't simply cling to the past and the ways we've always done things before. I'm inspired by the quote I placed on the desk, front and center, and something I consider each day. If we teach today's students as we taught yesterday's, we rob them of tomorrow. Written by John Dewey in 1915, a hundred years ago, this couldn't be more true in today's technological world. For our students, technology is an undeniable part of that. But my journey through ETAN, I've also learned that devices are just one facet, that pedagogy and content and technology are all important, but so are the complex relationships amongst the three. 
it's here that the desk elements also intertwine. They connect. In the overlapping of what we learn, how we learn it, and the ways we use technology to learn it is where we will find today's students and where we need to meet them.